<clears throat> okay, hi everyone. So it is 9 a.m. in the on the east coast of the United States. That's where I am, and that's where our guests are this uh, morning. And uh, we're going to start the webinar uh, with a very special guest, and we will talk about Seminole Gaming and Hard Rock International. And uh, before we get into the introductions, let me talk a little bit about the way this webinar will go. Uh, so first of all, um, I know that not everyone can attend it live. I have received quite a few emails from people in Asia who said that it's already too late. Some people on the west coast of the United States who said for them it would be like 6 a.m. so they wouldn't be able to attend. And then some people apparently are in a favorable zone, but for them it's the time when they are at, at work so they cannot watch us live. But hopefully there will be quite a few students and I see there are about a dozen watching us on YouTube. Uh, hopefully there will be more watching us live. So those of you who are uh, not able to attend the event obviously will have the recording. For those of you who are able to be here live, here are some, um, let's call them rules or, or recommendations. Uh, one, if you have questions, you can email them at any time to admin at xculture.org or just type them in the comments here in this uh, uh, session and I'll see them. Two, if you would like to ask a question in person, which is always, always recommended, just simply click on the presenter link and you will be right here. And I see we have two people uh, joining us at this time, Talisha and Richard. Very good, so if you would like to be here, that's perfectly fine. However, keep in mind the following. We have a limit of 10 people in the presentation room, so we may not be able to allow everyone to be here alive. So uh, if there are too many people here and if you would like to ask a question, log in, ask a question, talk to the presenter, and then maybe log out at some point. But again, if you want to ask a question, live is always better than just email, unless you cannot, uh, I don't know, the technology does not allow you to then send me an email. Other than that, it's a usual webinar, just like we've done many of them, and uh, let's see how it goes. So now I'm going to turn to Dr. Lelani Baumanis uh, of Johnson & Wales University, who is also the director of the Exculture Symposium in Miami, uh, whose idea that symposium was, and who basically does all the work organizing this wonderful event. So she will introduce our guest, and I'll just use this opportunity to thank Leilani for, I know she's invested already hundreds of hours in this, and probably will invest many hundreds more. Thank you so much. It's a big deal, it matters, uh, at least to the 150 students, and who knows how many professors. Uh, thank you so much for your hard work. Anyway, all yours now. You're welcome. Good morning, everyone. Um, again, I'm Leilani Baumanis. I'm a professor at Johnson & Wells University College of Business. And uh, I am very, very, very excited about hosting the 150 of you, plus your professors and your coaches to Johnson & Wales, July 15th through the 19th, departing on the 20th. So make sure you put that on your calendar. This morning, we are hosting our uh, very own Jimbo Osceola who is a tribal member for the Seminole Tribe of Florida and who is also one of the directors of food and beverages for Seminole Gaming, right? Actually, the director of hospitality for Seminole Gaming and food and beverage comes under, is one of the departments that comes under us. We are actually the department that is in charge of everything that is non-gaming in operations in, in the uh, tribe's gaming facilities. I always say that he is actually the facilitator. He's he, he has that title, <laughs> but he does everything. <laughs> so uh, and Jim and I have been good friends for a long time. So um, and we are very, very pleased to have Seminole Gaming as our uh, challenge. And uh, I'm going to allow him now to take it away. Um, and we shall start with maybe a uh, proper introduction of what you do um, and um, what the organization is about very briefly and then we'll go on to the questions. Okay. My name is Jim Osceola. I am the Director of Hospitality for Seminole Gaming Administration, which is a company that operates this, the uh, six gaming facilities for the Seminole Tribe of Florida. We are located in Florida and only in Florida, located on, under the sovereign jurisdiction of the Seminole Tribe of Florida Council. Um, my job is strictly with non-gaming revenue, although uh, 
gaming revenue is is uh, also I say strictly with non gaming revenue it's it is and it isn't um, we are a casino company that is our business model we do have hotels attached to our casinos but we are not a hotel company um, we'll go into this later on but Hard Rock International is becoming the hotel company of the Seminole tribe of Florida both companies are owned and operated separately. They both have their own executive teams and they both have their own CEOs. That is Hard Rock International and Seminole Gaming. Mm -hmm. However, there is a, a hybrid per se with uh, the Seminole Hard Rock Hollywood. Um, so that's where the confusion I think is, is getting up is that the Hard Rock brand is tagged with some of the casinos in the Florida area. Yes, our Tampa Casino and our Hollywood Casino operations are both branded with the Hard Rock brand. And um, it, it has made a difference in everything, especially marketing, um, going after a certain demographic and, and being able to uh, sell ourselves as, um, as Hard Rock which is which is a global entity and, and becoming more and more well known around the world so um, so we're gonna start with the questions and uh, the question number one is what is the difference between Seminole Gaming and Hard Rock International the difference is simple and not so simple Seminole Gaming is a company that is owned by the Seminole tribe of Florida as is Hard Rock International, and like I said, they're operated separately. Um, Hard Rock is an international company. Seminole Gaming is a company that operates only in Florida because Florida properties are on territory that is under the sovereign jurisdiction of the Seminole Tribe of Florida Council. The council is our form of government. It is a constitutional form of government, and, and that fact is going to come into um, in, in in part of the conversation. I think a little later on. I think I saw with one of the questions. Mm -hmm. But isn't it um, also true that the is regulated by state? So um, the the gaming in Florida is only governed within the state of Florida. That's true. However, um, because the Seminole Tribe is a sovereign, mm -hmm. meaning independent government, uh, independent of the state of Florida. Um, it's a dependent sovereign when it comes to the relationship with the United States government. And the United States government, since, uh, like you said, like you pointed out, it's the states that regulate gaming. So this, the uh, United States has created a situation where where both sovereign entities, meaning some, meaning tribal entities and state entities, are uh, required to come to an agreement at a negotiating table mm -hmm. and move forward uh, with the interests of the tribes in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on to question number two, who are your main competitors? We have none. <laughs> but if there were competitors, who would they be? In that business? <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say we, we have none in, in, the, in the, the Hard Rock uh, brand. There, were, there have been other brands, I'm not going to name them, Planet Hollywood, for instance. Um, <laughs> And they had a lot of success early on. I don't know what happened, but they fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, hard Rock hit on hard times as well. Um, I think all those type of themed restaurants did at one time um, in the 90s, late 90s, and early part of this century. And when the tribe bought Hard Rock International, there was um, a re. There was an investment that the tribal council decided to make and with that reinvestment um, 
there was a rejuvenation in, in the Hard Rock brand and the Hard Rock name globally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with Seminole Gaming, uh, hmm. we, we are we are we are a gaming company, and we are the number one gaming company in the United States, perhaps even the world. So, when you say who are our competitors, I think that we compete with ourselves, especially in South Florida. In Florida, we compete with ourselves because we have. In, the Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood area, we have three casinos that are within 20 miles of each other. So there's a, you know, there's a limited population at any point in time. And there is, uh, it makes it difficult, but each casino has, has its marketing plan and, and, do a great job of, of marketing themselves to different demographics in, in a very in a very small geographical area when, when mm -hmm. you really, really come down to it. Mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Palm Beach to South Miami and South Dade County, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not a very big area because mm -hmm. it's concentrated around the beaches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on, question number three. How do you measure the success of your hotels, Hard Rock Hotels? occupancy rate, revenues, uh, daily occupancy in comparison to the rest of the industry? Like I said, we are not a hotel company. So our, our business model is not resort hotel. It is casino. Our hotels are there in Florida strictly for the convenience of our gaming guests. It turns around when you when you talk about hard rock properties such as the Punta Cana property in the Dominican Republic, which is about 2,300 rooms, and their business model is opposite ours. They're a hotel with a casino as an amenity. Mm -hmm. And you own Punta Cana as well, right? We do not. It is oh, a franchise. It's a franchise. Okay. But um, we have operated, uh, had, um, our hand in operations of the casino that was at the request of the hotel owners because we are a casino company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we, they are a hotel company, so they continue to operate the hotel and do a great job. Mm -hmm. They really, really do. They, they've done a great job with representing the brand and then, you know, the company couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm. So is your business affected by seasons? Do yes. you have a high and low? Um, our business, I'm not sure whether you mean Seminole Gaming's businesses in Florida or Hard Rock International business globally. So, so let's say casino in Florida for now. Yes. Uh, not by much. We, we have come to a point where we are not, we are not dependent on seasonal tourist traffic. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's because South Florida is an international tourist destination to begin with, so mm -hmm. there are always lots and lots of people. The challenge is getting, actually the, the challenge is getting our name out there mm -hmm. with all the other, other things that there are to do in South Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and South Florida is a great place to be because there are a lot of attractions it, and like I said, the, the main challenge is getting the name out there mm -hmm. and getting people through the doors mm -hmm. because once they come in our service is so stellar mm -hmm. um, i really do believe in our service uh that i i know that that's why a lot of people come back and i know that's why they stay they, they lengthen their stays from maybe a couple hours to a couple of days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah when you guys come to the hard rock hollywood um, resort and casino, Seminole Hard Rock Hollywood Resort and Casino. You're gonna see how incredible it is. Um, the downside is it's not gonna be ready. Is that <laughs> you were there at the beginning? This guitar hotel that is is going to be built is gonna be incredible. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Question. Um, 
Let's see, what are the main factors that affect your business? We found out that in 2008, we are also affected by economic shifts. You know, the whole planet was affected in 08. And because of, because of the spending habits of everybody was changed during, you know, that recession, we're still feeling those changes. And I still think that we're still feeling that recession as well. Not just us, but you know, everybody on a global basis. Mm -hmm. um, we've all had to change the way we do business in certain ways. And for instance, um, if someone came with $100 to spend, uh, they're still coming with $100 to spend, but at this point, they're spending 80 in the casino and spending $20 for lunch. So they're still spending hundred dollars. It's just not. It, it's just not in the same way that they were spending it in '07. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, now we have to work a little bit harder for our, our our guests and and the money that they spend with us, and we have to be that much better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which service. is which is a great challenge for everybody in in the service industry. Um, you just have to be that much better because everybody else is, is wants to be that much better too or should want to be that much better. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's always the benefit of competition and downturns that um, provisions from corporations improve to maintain their customer base. Um, competition also does that very well. Okay, next question is what does your typical customer look like today? We don't, I don't think that we have a typical customer. If, if I had to nail it down, uh, historically, which is the biggest stat line that we have to go with, uh, I think historically it is probably someone in an older demographic, especially when it comes to the hard rock brand. Um, that company started with, um, what we now call classic rock mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and continued with that for the most part in the last 10 years hard rock has has begun a, has begun a change to attract younger people by including more and more types of music and and doing more with the music right in, in its uh, cafe venues, um, I've seen really, really fun concerts and relevant concerts, mm -hmm. you know, relevant to the demographic that, that Hard Rock wants to, wants to bring in uh, in different properties. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna piggyback off of this question. Um, when was the Hard Rock Live added to Seminole Gaming? Um, Hard Rock Live, by the way, is a concert hall. It's, well, it's a concert stadium, not very big, um, but it's big enough to where it can host. I saw Sarah Bareilles there. I saw Bette Midler there. I saw some really big names there. So when was that added on as a part of the portfolio? We opened up the Hard Rock property in Hollywood in 04, and I think, I think, Paradise and Hard Rock Live were opened a year and a half later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does that bring in a lot of customers having that venue? You can actually see a difference in the drop on certain show nights. Uh huh. The drop meaning um, the revenue that that comes in through the casino floor. Ah. So. It, it does make a difference with certain kinds of music um, attracting certain demographics. Um, you know, in South Florida, we have lots and lots of different kinds of, of people. And that's part of the reason why South Florida is, is the great place that it is. Um, but we have been to date very local. <laughs> So, with the local. Yeah, you know, it's a pepper. Oh, it's beautiful. 
Daniela uh, and everybody else. But it's very important that while you're here, try to mute your microphones because we're getting feedback. <laughs> Daniela, <laughs> mute your mic. <laughs> I think I should be able to do it, but for some reason it's not working. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, but it seems like it's yeah, it's good. Okay. It's good. Um, well, what's interesting thing? What's interesting too is that um, while I was there during the comedy show, it seemed like the restaurants were packed, like standing room only. Yes. But you're saying that the revenue is pulled from gaming. Is it then? Um, do the revenues then? improve in the restaurants and the surrounding um i yes. guess amenities that that that's true however i i say i mentioned the drop of the casino because remember we are a casino company right. i am you know i'm the director of hospitality and that is everything that is non-gaming in revenue and it's very important to us as a point of hospitality that when people come to our our venues, they have a choice. Right. Choices are great. Right. And um, we have to provide enough seats in those venues. Mm -hmm. um, so when uh, when we know we're going to have a show, mm -hmm. we of course we staff up. At, you know, it's all hands on deck in in all of our. Um, in, in every place in the casino. In all of your amenities, Everything. right. The amenities, uh, the uh, the casino itself. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just a great way for us to show how good we can be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in servicing guests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a great opportunity. Our people at all of our at all of our properties have <coughs> been hitting a home run. Right. For for a long time now because I was there the night that Chris Rock I didn't even know Chris Rock was coming <laughs> but I was there ready to eat dinner the night that Chris Rock came and everybody was still very hospitable and everybody you know service was still exceptional but the amount of people that were in those restaurants were really all of them were jam-packed yes and um, and I was with him and you know he's a tribal member, and we were taking, wow. we were having a long time getting served. <laughs> well, you know, I grew up in the hospitality business, and one of the things that I do at this point is make sure that everybody else gets a sandwich, and I'm at the end of the line, and unfortunately. Um, so you I don't with go me with that? him. I don't go with him when, the, when Chris Rock is in town. I don't go with him. <laughs> that that's just something I've learned along the way, and it's it's cultural also for for my people to make sure that um, all of our guests, all of our visitors, have something to eat, something to drink, a place to rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that those are just points of hospitality that that my culture teaches. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is this uh, very famous, popular New York uh, bestseller book uh, titled "Real Leaders Eat Last," mm -hmm. and here it's literally <laughs> "Leaders Eat Last." Yeah, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, it, is most of your business from local or from tourists? And if it's in, from tourists, from what countries do they originate from? We get people from all over the globe. Um, when I first started it, I'm a germaphobe. I just want you guys to know for this next statement. <laughs> the casino, um, 11 years ago, I started in the poker room. And you, and you remember 11 years ago, everybody in the universe was playing poker. It was the biggest thing on the planet. Um, I wore <laughs> I wore latex gloves under um, a black pair of regular gloves because we do get people from all over the world and people come right off airplanes come right over to the casino and like I said I'm a germaphobe so you know I got permission to do that because we do get people right off planes mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. it, it, they might have come on a 15-hour plane ride mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. who knows where mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and they come they came right over to the casino we get some casino guests this is why they come to South Florida mm -hmm. is for our our casinos and 
that's uh <laughs> yes yeah so you have that's to kind of that. <laughs> personal with me it's kind of a weird thing about me so um so how do you currently promote your business what types of advertisements do you use we we are in all kinds of um different types of marketing and this goes from the marketing that each property does up to the corporate marketing level um mm -hmm. we have all, I mean, everything that you can think of in, in, in social media, mm -hmm. you know, even, okay. even at this point, uh, there was a question a few years ago, why are we doing this? Because our demographic is a little bit older at that point, mm -hmm. um, in, in a huge way. And people were bringing out the fact that, you know, this demographic is not very technical. Tech, tech, tech okay. Uh, my father doesn't even own a phone. My mother, however, you know, she's she's the opposite. Um, but that was that was what was going on. And as we started to see our our own needs to be in social media mm -hmm. um, as as a growing growing form of marketing, then um, it so has become it has become more and more important. The, and we become better next, at it. The next question is then if if social media is not the way that you push your um, sales, how do you push your sales? I'm not saying that we don't push through social media. Mm -hmm. We, we as a company, one of this is, is the point of being green, is doing more and more over, uh, the, over the computer mm -hmm. because it's less paper mm -hmm. and Less cost. Less cost to us, more efficiency. We can reach a greater amount of people, but at the same time, um, we have to be able to measure mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. You know, who we're reaching, how many people we're reaching, yeah. uh, where our social media touches. Is yeah. it touching anyone? Is it touching enough people? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we're not the only company that's going through that. Yeah. Everybody is going through right. that. And as we go into the future, it's going to become more and more important um, for us to be able to use social media and to develop our social media to the point where we can, uh, where the properties can say to corporate, mm -hmm. our social media has reached this many people. Mm -hmm. That what that's what's nice about um, technology is that the metrics mm -hmm. are so easily um, downloaded and converted to information to where we can make much better decisions because the metrics prove, the numbers prove the, the reach that um, that you're accessing or that your attempts are, are, are reaching. Yeah, 2012, um, I did an event once a week on our casino property and to be a vendor there, you had to have at least 5,000 people following you on social media. Mm. And that was a requirement that that was done by a friend of mine who was organizing the event with me. And that's when I realized um, the impact of social media. Oh, tell them about um, the chef at New York Steakhouse, the butcher. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, he's no longer with us. Oh, no. No, oh, no. He, uh... he got stolen. <laughs> that's probably what happened. We had um, a butcher at our New York Yankee Steakhouse, which is located in our Coconut Creek Casino. And um, great guy, his personality was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, loved what he did and loved to show people, not in a, in a look at me kind of sense, but look at what we do. Mm -hmm. He was a very, very company person, very, very, um, very much wrapped up in the happiness of being a butcher and he he loved to educate people about what they were ordering from the menu and would you know make regular trips out to the dining room like the chef in the uh in the kitchen did mm -hmm. but he would come from the butcher shop which was located in the restaurant and and very visible to the public when you walked in as a matter of fact it was the first thing that you saw mm -hmm. and it was wide open so he he would stand there and he would talk to guests he had followers all over the world and they would come to that restaurant 
just to see him and just to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And he got invitations from everywhere, from, from every part of the planet because of his social media contacts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was, he was a really great personality. And mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of it started, but, mm -hmm. um, he, you know, he was able to reach out and he did a lot for the restaurant and it was all through social, social, social media. media. Yeah. So, okay. Let's Lelani, Lelani, uh, maybe before going on with the questions by email, I see many questions that come by email uh, from people who are actually right here with us. Maybe we should give them a chance to ask live. Uh, I know like, for example, Talisha, I saw s several questions she sent by email. Do you want to unmute your microphone? I don't know, Estefania, uh, Eva, Julia. So if you would like to ask your questions, maybe, uh, you know, just unmute your microphone and go ahead and ask them. If you'd like to, obviously. And if not, we can just keep going with the emails. I okay. received another 2,000 questions. While we're waiting for you guys to uh, unmute, so we'll hear, oh, Eva, there you are, Eva. Yeah. Hi. Hi, well, first of all, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. This Where are you from, Eva? I'm from Spain originally, uh, but I lived in the U.S. for a very long time. I actually lived in St. Petersburg, so right next to Tampa. Oh. Ah. And now I am living in Mexico. Uh, wait, so where are you right now? Mexico. Playa del You're Carmen. in Mexico. Ah, okay. Yeah. Bienvenido. <laughs> gracias, gracias. Okay, so I have a few questions from my group, my entire group. Um, first one is about demographics. So you were saying that things change a lot in marketing when you started working with Hard Rock. Um, and since we were talking about the fact that Hard Rock had an older demographic, do you guys and your other casinos have more of a younger demographic? Or, or is it still like an older kind of crew that goes to your casinos? Historically and today, um like I said before, the stat lines, the stat line shows that it is an older demographic. We are reaching out to just like the rest of the industry is. We are reaching out to uh, younger age groups simply because if we don't, you know, we've got yeah. a very limited. Actually, going they're to all be a gonna company. die, <laughs> and there's gonna be nobody else. <laughs> That's something That's that a few of us pointed out um, a few years ago with, with Hard Rock International and, and the Hard Rock theme is classic rock. Yeah. And that attracts a certain demographic that has uh, accumulated a certain amount of money. Okay. And at this point, they have the time and the money to, to join us at our, at our venues, and uh, they do. Okay. Um, we going into the future are just like, like I said, just like everybody else, uh, working seriously and diligently on trying to attract and and hold millennial traffic. Okay. Um, this one is also about demographics, but it's specific to our challenge. Um, we're gonna be doing the cruise line, and uh, we were wondering if with this new project you wanna focus it to maybe attracting other kind of demographics or do you want to stick to the one that you know is working for you? Like I said, going into the future, we want to attract the younger demographic. Okay. I think the cruise line does also. Okay. And in my opinion, the cruise lines are doing a really, really good job of working younger people into their future. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, if they, if they, 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 they actually are, uh, an industry that has been historically dependent on on an older demographic right, right and yeah. uh, we have too so this is kind of going hand in hand if we can if if we can attract a younger group <clears throat> perhaps there <clears throat> is something that we can connect with industry in south florida which is a huge industry here the number one in the world by the way south florida is the number one cruise line industry in the world and it's huge gap between the number two and the number one okay, with, with that keep in mind that um i don't want to create package this is this okay, is me talking. this is me talking and my one opinion um because even though i am 
in non-gaming revenue, I did come from the casino. And the casino is our business model. So if, if we can create something that is an excursion, mm -hmm. then that's something I think that we can work with. We, we create great amenities around the casino floor because we don't want people leaving the casino floor. If we can, if we can serve you dinner, if we can serve you a cocktail, if we can serve you your cup of coffee at, in, on the casino floor, we do. Yeah. Simply because that's where um, our biggest point of revenue is. So, you know, all the sandwiches that we serve, all the sushi that we serve, all the coffee that we serve, it's an amenity. It's, to, it's, it's something that people have to have on the, that are at our casinos. I think also going back to uh, the demographic question, if you take a look at the pattern that the cruise ships are taking in terms of amenities, um, a lot of them have um, rock climbing walls. A lot of them have um, yep. zip lines. A lot of them have discos. It's a very young. Oh, okay. As one of your packages right your option yeah. is to spend a weekend pre or post to seminole hard rock in hollywood or in tampa because remember that there are two yeah. that we posed in the the challenge yeah one other thing that i want to add too is that over the last since 2013 we have worked hard to to bring in a big gaming demographic from all over the world at Seminole Gaming. Um, that has really, really, really made a big impact on our revenue. And honestly, it can make an impact both ways. You know, casino players like that can add a lot to your revenue. They can also take a lot from your revenue, which has happened. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, that we have had to develop are you going to be here um yes they're all going to be okay here. <laughs> well, okay great because when i i want to show you so much about our operations um i love bragging about what we do you're going to show so, all 150 uh, yeah, of them i am i am i will <laughs> but i want to show you our 12th floor at the, at the hollywood property no don't say that because i i don't think i've worked that out yet oh okay but I want to show you some of the amenities, <laughs> some of the amenities that our high-end players do. And, and our high-end players are a small group of people. Um, probably the 80, 85 percent mm -hmm. of the rest of uh, our casino people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, I okay. guess I have to leave it at that. Yeah. Don't I? Mm. Is there anybody else with a question? Thank you, Eva. Oh, sorry, I have a Gracias. Gracias. See you soon. Oh. Oh, OK. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, inside that demographic, I there's another question more. Um, cruises are starting to be a lot for families, and I don't know if that's any problem with the whole casino idea, or if it's okay to include kids and families into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We are not family friendly. We okay. do get we do get some families because we are a great hotel. However. Um, we have no real amenities for anyone under 21. Okay. I, I, may, I say 21 because in Florida, you have to be 21 to have a cocktail. You have to be 21 to get on the casino floor. Mm -hmm. um, you can play at 18, you can play poker, but as for the rest of the casino floor, you have to be 21. So there's nothing, it, it, it comes a libelous situation, a liability situation for us. So, and, and it okay. makes it, um, when you go on the casino floor, there's actually um, a line where if you're under the age of 21, you cannot cross this line and they want you to stay on this strip of carpet. So okay. it's just, it's all very awkward. Okay. We're at the playground. That's, you know, I'll just say it that way. Okay. Sounds we, we, we are for adults. Thank you, Eva. Wait, got more. 
There's a whole bunch of people. Sorry, sorry. I'll do. I'll we do can... one inclusive one. Um, do you want to part or have a relationship or a partnership with any cruise line in particular, or do you no everything by yourself? No. right? And um, it, no, right. I'm guessing it's all gonna be I'm for those two casinos. Are you planning on opening more casinos? in Florida or other places? I know you said with the regulations, it might be hard, but are you planning on opening in other places? You know, we're always planning expansion. Um, we, I believe that we are great for the Florida economy. We really, really are. As operators, um, there, I don't think there are any, any operators that are any better than, than we are in, in the casino world. Um, we have great amenities. We have great service. We have uh, a great product, you know, on our casino floors. Um, our guests are very, very happy with us. And we're always, of course, asking what more can we do? I answer your question. Yeah, actually. And, um, and Eva, we've muted you now, so we don't know what you're saying, <laughs> but let me piggyback off of that. You're welcome. Um, for the challenge, the next question is, would it be better if we, it, these are the students I'm assuming, if we tried to develop a plan for the entire company or should we focus on one particular, and it says hotel or restaurant, now that we know that we are not a hotel or restaurant business, but should we maybe focus on one particular casino or one particular region? So that's the question. Should we develop in? Uh, should we develop a plan for the entire organization or for one specific location or region, et cetera? That's kind of a difficult question for me because, you know, I work for Seminole Gaming, which is all of the tribes Seminole tribes casinos. Um, but I think we're narrowing things down to the relationship between Hard Rock International and. Um, Hard Rock Hotels and Casinos. Um, I think for the purposes of, of, this, uh, of this development, we should probably concentrate on, on the Hard Rock properties in Tampa and in Hollywood simply because our other properties, only one of our, the only one of our other properties has a hotel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we wouldn't be able to accommodate um, the traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't accommodate the traffic now. We run at, a, at, at um, nine, last year we were at 96% occupancy for the year. Yeah, and, 96% and the, that other 4% is there because we held back rooms for our, for our gamers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other thing too, um, if you, if you know about the product life cycle, so let's apply the product life cycle to a company life cycle. Seminole Gaming acquired, or I'm sorry, the Seminole Tribe of Florida acquired Hard Rock International just recently in the last, what, 15, 20 years, right? Yeah. Which is, this is a huge company buying another huge company. And that evolution is a very slow process because there's a lot of politics going on. There's a lot of movement going on. And this relationship is, is at its growth strategy. It has, it, it's still climbing very steeply. It has not yet come to fruition to where they can actually develop something that is more steady and more constant. So imagine that you guys are actually partaking in the concept of developing this organization and it's um, uphill climb. Imagine someday, and maybe this will be when you guys are 40, 50 years old, that it will come to a stage where it's actually more mature and you'll see the gravity of the impact of the acquisition that you partook in when you were younger. Does that make sense, boss? Did I say that in, yeah? Yes, it makes sense to me, yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about another thing. What are other products and services that are provided by Seminole Gaming? What do you mean by products and services? Okay, so we know about hotels, we know yeah. about restaurants. Talk about this 
how are we going to attract the young millennials and how you guys are developing this this dance um what do you call that the the club the dance club concept the dance club concept that's going to be something that comes and then out also the in, pool yeah that's good that's something that's going to be in our uh our new development which will open in it's targeted for the summer of 2019 um the pool is going to be huge it's going to be <laughs> It's going to be something like you would see in the South Pacific, uh, with um, with bungalows spread out over a huge, huge pond, um, all above water. There's going to be an outdoor party area, outdoor concert area. We will also have an indoor concert hall. The Hard Rock Live that you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. is going from a 5,500 seat arena to I'm not sure at this point what it will be, but it will be at least 10,000 people. Wow. So that partnered up with um, what happens at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami uh, will allow us to do a lot more mm -hmm. with entertainment and a lot more with big names because mm -hmm. we can't bring in um, a big name show because we would have to sell tickets at 5,500 seats. We would have to sell them for a lot more than Mm -hmm. you know we want we want to mm -hmm. and then you know we would probably have to give them away which is something that we don't want to because we don't want you know you don't want to get your your guests accustomed to freebies like that right um you know it has a certain amount of value and and you really really as a business need to get the value so that everybody understands that that this is valuable so we have we have Hard Rock Live that's going from fifty five hundred to ten thousand seats. You've got the hotel, um, the the new guitar hotel <laughs> pool, and it, literally this hotel is going to have bungalows that have swim up entrances into the bungalows. It's going to be ridiculous. There's nothing um, like it in in the continental United States. There, there is absolutely so nothing like it. Tell us about the club because this is their demographics. This is what they're looking for. Tell us about that club. Okay, I'm not involved in um, in development. Uh, I do meet. I do go to some of those meetings. However, um, and I and this is the, this is the honest truth. I don't go because I don't want to answer questions from team members. What's going up here? What's going on there? Uh, because some things at some points we're not allowed to divulge. And I am not, I, it's just, it's just the way I feel. I'm not going to be someone who says to someone, I, I don't know when I do know, because that's, uh, you know, that's mm -hmm. lying. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, I don't want that's <laughs> I can't even say how much I, I don't want to do that or be the one that does that. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go back to that because I've got two <laughs> questions. Okay. But, um, so just and this is a quick answer are the hard rock cafe restaurants owned or franchised so i know that's a very quick answer for you some of them are franchised mm -hmm. uh, most of them are owned by the company that was the original business model mm -hmm. um i think the franchise model is is going to change it's going to have to uh to help the franchisees make more money and, and feel like they own the restaurant instead of uh, the restaurant owning them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, just there are franchise territories mm -hmm. where it's better for someone who's local to to operate in that market. Mm -hmm. And then places like uh, New York City, you know, that's the United States mm -hmm. and we're a U.S. based company. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's the best Rob idea to all of those in the, in the continental United States. I can I on I I'm pretty sure that uh, the company owns all the cafes. Mm -hmm. The hotels are a different story. Uh, the Chicago Hotel is a franchise, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we're moving more and more away from the restaurant business model to uh, hotel hotel casino business model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, a slow movement yes. into a new business model. It doesn't happen overnight, but it's at a growth stage that you guys will get to observe in the next 20 years. Okay, so number three, number four, I'm gonna put this together, okay? Could you describe your typical day 
it's crazy because I go with him sometimes. Um, what do you do? How much do you spend on work? Do you have time for fun? And then this person says, I want to become an executive like you one day. What advice would you give me to achieve my goals? <laughs> um, I'm a workaholic, first of all. I'm in a 24-hour company, so I'm the happiest person in the world because I go home. Dog, uh, my kids are grown. Um, my lifestyle has contributed in a big way to me being as single as I've been in my lifetime. Um, there's a, there are a lot of things with being an executive in any big corporation with uh, the time that you have to give it, the time that it deserves, and, and there's no, in my opinion, there's no such thing as a work-life balance when you get to a certain point in executive management. It, you know, if I had a dog, he would probably bite me if I, you know, when I go home, because I don't do that very often. I, I love to be on the road. I really, really do. Um, and this job allows me between our six casinos, mm -hmm. between here and Tampa, um, I'm at a different property all the time. Uh, as the director of hospitality for the corporation, um, it's part of my job. It is my job, actually, to be at all of the casinos. I, I was at uh, our Immokalee Casino, which is out by Naples, Florida, yesterday. Uh, today I'll be in uh, Hollywood. Next week, on one day, I'll be in Coconut Creek at our Coconut Creek Casino. I'll also be spending time at the Classic Casino, which was the original Indian casino in the United States back in 1979. Um, I just go all over and I and I also do some work for Hard Rock International and it's you know I love doing that because it involves international travel involves yeah okay so this one is a really quick one because we were just talking about it tell me more about your your plans for a, a Hard Rock cruise ship at this time there are no real plans for a Hard Rock cruise ship we're in the middle of of doing a lot of things um, on shore. There was some talk a couple of years ago. Um, there are a lot of things at Hard Rock International. We're changing the, the home location from Orlando. We're moving that whole entire office to South Florida um, and incorporating a lot of the Seminole gaming offices mm -hmm. in the same building as Hard Rock International simply because there are a lot of there's a lot of interaction that's that's going on and that's going to increase we've created a um, an office called shared services uh, a lot of it is for efficiency some of its making us a lot more cost effective um, uh, our HR group from Seminole Gaming is becoming more and more the, I guess, part of the, uh, or the biggest part of Hard, uh, Hard Rock International's human resource group. Um, as we go from the restaurant model mm -hmm. to the hotel, hotel casino model for Hard Rock International, this is going to become more relevant because that is what we are. Mm -hmm. We we learned in the beginning when Hard Rock, uh, when we branded our Seminole Gaming properties Hard Rock, that a casino hotel is is a completely different animal than mm -hmm. than a restaurant and a cafe. Yeah. So um, next question is what country? It says, are you looking to expand your business into other countries? Which we know you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't be our business challenge. But, but what countries in particular are you looking to expand in as the model of Hard Rock Casino Hotel and Casino? Um, I have 
I have my own businesses. I have a coffee business, and I work. I've worked for years in since the '90s in Latin America. So that is some place where I would like to see more expansion of the of the Hard Rock brand mm -hmm. incorporated into the rest of what is being developed with uh, the hotels and casinos. Mm -hmm. Um, I Wait, think so let before, me just... before we, we do re redevelopment, there are certain situations like the Punta Cana properties where we have to do some, some development there. If you go to the hotel and decide that you want to get a burger at the Hard Rock Cafe, you have to get in a taxi and go about 20, 30 minutes down the road. Um, the Hard Rock Cafe was there first, and it's owned by... A franchisee and then the hard rock hotel and casino was developed later and that's owned by a different franchisee mm -hmm. i think one of the things that we have to do is we have to incorporate the hard rock cafe as an as a as a, a, a an amenity mm -hmm. taking it from being the main part of the show created recreated as a, an amenity to mm -hmm. the the new different kinds of properties, which will be hotels and hotel casinos. Mm -hmm. that, that'll help us to recreate mm -hmm. Hard Rock Cafe. And in my opinion, strictly my opinion, it will help Hard Rock Cafe to become uh, the great burger restaurant that it used to be, mm -hmm. uh, simply because it will become an, uh, an amenity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to then this question. Okay, just to clarify that Seminole Gaming is confined to the state of Florida and that Hard Rock International is the brand that's going global, okay? And again, both entities are owned under the Seminole Tribe of Florida. So I hope that that's clear with everybody now. So how much control uh, do you have in, or how much freedom do individual cafes and hotels have in terms of choosing their food and in, in terms of uh, providing their services? Is there standardization in place? There is, and it has become more and more standardized. There was, there was a point when um, cafes were allowed to do a little bit for their menu, but you know, when I, when I was at the Paris store, I was not looking for something French in the Hard Rock Cafe. Mm -hmm. And honestly, people don't go to the Hard Rock Cafe to find ethnic food. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they go there for um, a, uh, a cheeseburger experience, something that was created way back in 71 by uh, two guys in London. And that was exactly what they, the reason why they created the Hard Rock Cafe was because they wanted a place where they could go to get a burger. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was some experiments right now. I think it's limited to each cafe being able to do a, a localized burger, something that's, uh, something that's- That's that local. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that shows uh, local ingredients, maybe a local culture, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So John has a question. So I see you, John. So I think, Voss, are you going to turn him on? John, you're on. Yeah. We still can't hear you, John. Nope, still no audio. Unmute. John, we don't, John, don't, don't hear you. Oh, it could oh, be the setting when the microphone comes out. Ah, okay. Yeah. John, okay. you want to stay with us while well, we go to the questions. Okay, so let's go to another question. Uh, 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 Talisha also asked at some point about a question, so uh, if you maybe okay. can try and go live if you would like still to ask the question if we haven't hit it. Talisha, well, Talisha, do you have a question? I, I see that you're muted. As soon as you're unmuted, we'll, we'll oh, there you go. Okay, Talisha, what is your question? Okay, hi. Hi. Okay, hi. Okay, so my question was regarding to the cruise industry. I know that you mentioned earlier that you don't have a, something in particular to look that you're looking into. So I was wondering, how do you hope to build off of the Hard Rock name and enter 
the cruise industry in Florida because it's so big? Um, that's kind of a weird question. I think because the cruise industries a uh, casino amenity, um, you know, people are only looking for something to do before and after their cruise. Uh, I, I met some people in an elevator at our Hard Rock property in Hollywood, and they were checking into the hotel because they're, they were early for their cruise. So they didn't. They had a day to uh, a day to spend. So they came, spent the night with us, and then the next day they were going on their cruise. Um, again, strictly speaking, from my own opinion, I think I think that we need to to be an excursion kind of a thing, mm -hmm. and not and not a package because we don't want to send our you know, we want our casino players on the casino floor. Right. You know, we don't want them uh, leaving, which is, you know, which is why we're an adult playground. Come, this is why they come. They don't come for a cruise. They don't come for the beaches. Uh, they don't come for um, a lot of reasons. They simply come because they want a great gaming experience. Mm -hmm. I have a bunch of highlighted questions here, and I'm sorry for those of you guys who are not going to get uh, all of your answers question or your questions answered. But um, I'll go through the selected uh, most interesting questions, and I'll go to the easy one. Are you married? <laughs> <laughs> are you married? Sorry that I asked, but four <laughs> students want to know. <laughs> I'm married to my career. Um, I like I said, I'm a workaholic. I always have been. Um, I have two boys that are that are grown, um, really, really great young men. Um, I uh, I do have some regrets. I really, really do. But uh, I have always been married to my career. That that's. <laughs> so the answer is no. <laughs> And any women out there, you don't want to be. <laughs> Larry Williams wants to know, have you considered partnering with other companies and brands as a way to effectively reach millennials, technology and entertainment companies, for example? We are an entertainment company. Um, I think we are learning a lot from a lot of other companies as other companies are learning from our efforts. That demographic is, is a really is a real big challenge for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I think <laughs> this is simply my my analysis. Um, there's going to be a certain point in time when the economy will be lacking because of this and we're going to we're going to stick strictly with the millennial attitude in a strict model um and i hate to say this but i'm going to say it um there's going to be a certain time in the economy where it will there will be i'm not going to use the word recession there's not going to be so much spent in the economy because the the big demographic which we call the millennials won't have the money disposable income they disposable won't have the money to spend income. but at some so point in the united states or worldwide is it just the u.s or everywhere oh no i i think this will be worldwide because uh well it depends you know how big is the millennial thing the millennial attitude prevalent in in different cultures in in which are different countries i know here in the united states i think there will be a certain times when when there will be less money in the economy mm -hmm. because there will be less money to be spent but at some point in time later in their lives mm -hmm. and remember this is strictly my financial analysis of, of this market um, he has an accounting degree there will be 
it, it, later in life, there they will be the same as the as everybody else, mm -hmm. but probably not until their mid to late thirties, maybe early forties, because at some point in time, uh, life just happens. And this is actually indicative of the patterns of households today. Younger people are going away to college. Four years later, they can't. They come back home because it's not cost effective for them to go out and live independently. And then also think about the large homes in America, um, not the rest of the world, of course, but the large homes that their parents had built up. And with the recession having had happened recently, the value of homes did not accelerate or appreciate as they wanted. So the, um, the valuation of homes stagnant, which makes it very uh, unlikely to sell the house. So instead of younger people going away and um, buying their own home, people are now coming back home because there's space, you know, and then also they're pooling money with their parents. And it just, it makes good uh, economic sense to go back home because of the limited disposable income. Sometimes I wish I could go back home. You do go back home. <laughs> okay, so this is from Kirill, Kirill Kosara, um, and he says, what is your ideal perfect candidate, student candidate, to work in Seminole Gaming Hard Rock International? What quality should one have uh, to have a chance for an internship or possibly a job at your company? We have, um, in, in our company, we have a lot of things to offer from all levels of management, including corporate. Um, we are a gaming company, so you have to keep that in mind. That's where most of our growth is. So I would say, just like anywhere else, be ready to learn, be flexible, um, be, be yourself. That's one of the things that, that's very important to our company is that you come as who you are. Experience, sometimes we, we, would, rather, we would rather that you not be experienced in this, in this industry because that allows us to teach you the way that we do things. However, you know, that does create some things, some situations where we are the only thing that you know. Mm. Um, we are trying to create travel situations where you, as, as a younger person, could come into this company and after a certain point in time, meaning after a couple of years, you could travel to other other. Hard Rock, rock Properties, because that's what I'm talking about, is, is Hard Rock International Company. Mm -hmm. uh, you could travel there in different countries, get a travel experience, because I believe travel is, is something that's very, very important as, as, um, as something that helps us to create who we are. Mm -hmm. And then be able to stay there or come back to the Hard Rock Properties in Florida. Mm -hmm. Um, that's something that, that I would like to see. That's something that I'm working very hard to develop in, you know, in the middle of everything else that we're developing. But that, just so you know, young people, that's something that, that, that this company is looking at because we all know that travel does um, create something in your mind that recreates you. Mm -hmm. And if we can if we can get you to uh, out of your comfort zone and then bring you back you know it's a win-win for you it's a win-win for for the company and remember too that hard rock international as a entity under seminole tribe of florida is only at the beginning stage of its growth so the potential and the opportunities will last your entire lifetime so if you can get on this property or in this company the, and, and be able to survive all the ups and downs in the early stages of development, there is space in this company for you for the future. 
Um, okay, so um, yeah, all, all the time, but um, at least the students are asking oh. for the permission to ask a question. John, do you want to maybe try again? Perfect, John, you're on. John, it seems like your microphone is still not working. Yeah, no, no, he's muted right now. We can see you being muted oh, right. John, now. Yes, you're muted. So unmute. Okay. John. Still, nope. not Still no audio. Okay, so how about then, uh, I'm not sure, Julia, Estefania, Joe, Anybody else? You guys want to ask questions now? Is yeah, I want to, almost. to make a wish. Okay. Hi. Estefania, okay. Who's going now? Who is this? Me. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, we can hear right? I wanted to know if uh, you could tell us something more about the five years of financial forecasting for the cruise challenge. I mean, you need uh, only revenues against costs or uh, your base financial forecast. So, Julia, are you f where are you calling us from? Italy. You're from Italy. So, yeah. hello. Uh, okay, so your question is, what is the financial expectation of the revenues coming in for the pre and post excursion is that what your question is yeah i mean also the format you need the financial forecast oh the format of the financial forecast so and maybe oh, just more because it sounds like the cruise idea is still only an idea so maybe That's one that. day right so it's a very very early stages so perhaps maybe then what kind of information and ideas could be useful at this particular stage, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, one thing that I want to add that's very, very important to me and very, very important to our uh, seminal gaming culture is I need all of you to replace the word employee with team member. Right. <laughs> and I need you to replace all the, 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 the incidents where you put customer with guest. That is a very important clarification. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, you know, tells you a lot about the culture of the company. That's his pet peeve. It is, it I, is. I, you know, I respect that, yeah. <laughs> okay, so how do you want them to deliver this format for you, the financial forecasting of the... Or, or maybe what would be useful and what may not be useful at this stage when it comes to the cruise uh, idea. So would it be just general ideas? Do you want them to go and do some, try to do some financial forecasting? Do, do you want them to do and maybe do some competition analysis, uh, some product development? Uh, what, what would be something that can actually be useful to you? Um, let's do, I don't know if we can do financial forecasting because that would, that would involve the casino, and there are a lot of things that I can't speak about. Um, when you when you guys come to the property, ask all the questions that we're not answering today. Please, please, please ask all the questions because at that point, um, you'll get a you'll have a better chance of 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 getting a great answer because or or getting an answer at all. There are just some things that that I'm. I'm not allowed to answer, I think. So when it comes to anything with revenue, with revenue forecasting, um, I, I need to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. I, I think what would be helpful is that uh, you take a look at the competition, Julia. Right. Uh, take a look at what the competitors are doing, how much uh, money they are able to generate, how much revenue they're able to generate by having excursions. So like find a comparable excursion that um, you imagine what uh, your product or service is going to be. And then, um, and, and, and if you can find a couple of them, that would also serve to validate the potential of developing your business model in this way. So hopefully that answers. Remember this one detail, we are not a hotel company and we run at a 96% occupancy rate. That's down two points from the previous year because we're holding back more rooms just in case we need them for gamers. We, would, we could run at 100% occupancy 
easily. Wow. What was the average for the industry, for the hotel industry? I mean, that sounds almost too good to be true. That's, that's impressive. It, it is too good to be true, but you have to remember that we're not a hotel. We're here to service, uh, to be at the service of our, of our casino guests. Mm -hmm. And but even more impressive as we go forward that it's those guests that, that we serve. We're a, we are totally an amenity. It took me two years to get that through my thick skull when I first came to this company, because you know, as, as an executive chef, I have a huge ego. Okay. Had, you know, they took care of that. No, he still has a huge <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, Julia, let's go back to the, the, the business is gaming, right? Okay. So yeah. we're selling uh, a pre and post cruise excursion to Seminole, Hollywood, Hard Rock Hotel and Casino or the Tampa Hotel Hard Rock and Casino, right? Yes. So the idea is that you are bringing guests pre and post from that cruise industry into the casino property to play in the casino. However, they are going to be staying at the Hollywood or Tampa hotel. Now the Hollywood Hard Rock Hotel, and for those of you guys who have not yet had the chance to take a look, go online to take a look at the new guitar hotel that's coming <coughs> it's going to be huge how many how many rooms at this point it's slated for 800 rooms 800. And, and at that point this will be a much more feasible idea because we will have the hotel space we will be able to do a, a lot more with marketing and in a lot of in a lot of different ways than we do now we market ourselves to gamers we don't have the hotel space and you might say that a 500 room hotel is a big hotel. Um, for us, it's not. Um, when we have upward, you know, right around 1500 rooms and brand new convention space, we'll be able to do in, in big, big ways, other things. So this, this project that we're working on now is something that I think we can look forward to incorporating in the future. It's not something that's now but you know hey we're always talking about the future right and the future is, is right around the corner yeah so there is a question from john and it's a long one but the main idea is if you ever do the cruise idea so would you be allowed to have the kind of slot machines and gaming on board of the cruise ship would it be run like a casino or will it be more of a traditional cruise for for us as a company if we did a Hard Rock cruise ship, the entertainment, let me say, will be amazing, first of all, mm -hmm. because we have uh, partnerships all over the entertainment industry. Right. And it would be for our gamers. So our gamers would expect a huge, uh, a huge experience in, in any casino that's on board that. It would be a complete and total party ship. It really, really would. There wouldn't be anything like it elsewhere in, in the cruise industry at all. Are you preselling the tickets? I'd like to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but boss, you can't take the family. Well, you can take your wife, but the kids have to stay. Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> so John, I think another part of John's question was that, you know, if you were to take a look at the Disney cruise ship model, which again is focused solely on families, mostly children, I think a hard rock ship would actually be the opposite to that. You know, that a lot of opportunities because you can literally, you know, there are so many things that are specifically for adults that you wouldn't put in a, you know, family friendly Disney. Right. Yeah. Right. And for those of you guys who are actually um, looking, entertaining that idea, first of all, I don't think that that is even slotted for the future, right? But if you are really entertaining the idea of having a hard rock cruise ship, um, you guys might want to take a look at the all-inclusive um, adult resorts in the Caribbean, like um, or, um, that are really, really um, only exclusively adult-oriented uh, environments. So, but again, I don't think that a hard rock ship is really something that, that you guys are even entertaining at this point. There has been talk about it in... And it didn't go far. There are so many other things that we've got um, so many as priorities, priorities. Yeah. and it's not it's not a it's not a priority. It's something that we've talked about, though. It really, yeah. really is. Yeah. 
So to clarify, so when you say cruise, you mean not a like a cruise in the, in the traditional, it's an excursion, right? Short term, is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, 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 it would be, it would be, um, and remember, just dreaming. Not it actually would, a challenge. It would be a ship that cruises. Uh, it would, it would be a way of connecting the, the hard rock dots in different in different countries um because you know we are a great experience and and we work very very hard to be relevant with our our great experience so we would take the ship uh say it docked in fort lauderdale take it from fort lauderdale to uh other other hard rock properties hard, other hard rock properties around, around the, world. the world but that is not the challenge do not write that challenge <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like actually a very good idea. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it's only a distant plan because it seems like well, a good idea. I pitched this idea to him two years ago and he says not a priority. So that might be our challenge, you know, a couple of years from now once the guitar hotel goes up and... Um, well, it's funny because at the same time you were talking about it, there was another person uh, in, in one of the, uh, what would become one of the ports of call who we were working to develop that idea and in, and with a lot of changes in management and a lot of changes in location at the hard rock international headquarters mm -hmm. in orlando this isn't something that is a priority it's not a you priority know, but it's a great idea it because is. the hard rock hollywood's headquarters is right here in hollywood florida and south florida is the cruise capital of the world and there are locations, hard rock hotel and casinos, potentially opening up that are very close to Ports of Paul. So someday it will, <laughs> a light will go bling and say, oh my God, that's such a great idea. And they'll remember this. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess we are at- yeah, We are pretty much yeah, 20 minutes over time. <clears throat> Allow me to ask one more question from myself. I'm just curious and I have to ask it. All those movies about casinos, like the casino, the Ocean's Eleven, all those, you know, that you see, how how true are they to the actual, you know, how casinos are run? Is there any truth there? Is that exactly how it's done or is it completely different? I think those movies were a little, a lot of drama and um, a lot of color added, but it, you know, in the early in the early uh, development of, of casinos and the casino industry, uh, there, you know, there, it, it was quite different from what it is today. Today, the casino industry is very corporate. Um, you know, <laughs> we, we don't beat people. <laughs> <laughs> so if I win a few million dollars, I'm, not, I'm safe. You know, yes. Um, it, it's very different from the movies that you see. It is, uh, like I said, it's very corporate. Everybody is expected in every venue to pull their own weight. Um, going back to historically, uh, food and beverage was a loss leader. In, in today's corporate world, the casinos are not allowed to run loss leaders like that. You know, everybody, you, know, you sell you sell a shrimp cocktail it has to make money it has to be a point of revenue you know that's one of the things that i did uh in my career um you know the, the reconciliation of finances for for everything that's non-gaming um it, it's very different from what you see in the movies um uh, we're we uh, are happy when you win. We, we, we need to see winners because the numbers are, are in favor of the casino, especially right. when there's a lot of time involved. So we want winners. We want people to have a good time. My mother, as a matter of fact, she likes to play. And she told me, if you walk into a casino and you don't hear people laughing and screaming and having a good time, go to another casino. So we want people laughing and screaming in our casinos. We want people winning. Um, we we actually need people to win because uh, if people see you as as a deep deep hole that everybody's throwing their money into, uh, 
um, you know, there's really no value in that, you know, long term. You know, you can't, you can't build a, a business on that, you know, any business. People have to people have to get value for their money. Makes perfect sense. Well, thank you so much. Uh, sorry, it took us a little longer than originally promised. Uh, and thank you so much for being so generous and staying with us longer. And uh, we look very much forward to seeing you in person in what four weeks, right? I can't yes. wait. I can't yes. wait. This is going to be great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's and a thank pleasure. You for joining. Sorry, we couldn't give everyone a chance to talk, but hopefully, most of the questions have been answered. And uh, you'll have another chance to ask questions in a few weeks. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody.